Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Who can enter? Sino nga ba talaga ang pwedeng pumasok sa kaharian ng Diyos? Ano nga ba ang kaharian na yon na dapat ay mapasok at mapuntahan ng mga tao? Panginoon, salamat po dahil kayo Diyos ng kaliwanagan. At ngayon umihimi kami ng liwanag upang lalong maunawaan kung sino ang nakakapasok sa iyong kaharian. Kung ano ang kailangan mangyari upang kami ay mapasailalim ng inyong pagahari. At this point, Father, we ask you to cleanse us, purify our hearts, cover us with the blood of your Son, Jesus, and preach to us. Take us by the hand, O God, and teach us. You are the speaker we want to hear, your voice. So be the voice, be the speaker, O Father. Use your servant, not as your instrument, but be the voice that will teach us. We seek you, we thank you. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Who can enter? Matthew 25, 1. The kingdom of heaven is like what happened when one night, when ten girls took their lamps and went to a wedding to meet the groom. So here, the teaching of Jesus opens with a story, with an allegory, with a parallelism, na ang basis ay yung wedding traditions ng panahon niya. Na may mga abay, na mga babae naghihintay sa daan para dumating yung groom. At may mga dala-dala sila mga ilawan, oil, lamps. At pag dumating na yung groom, susunod na sila, papasok na sila dun sa wedding venue at magkakaroon sila ng kasiyahan. And the kingdom of heaven was likened to that event. The kingdom is not always a place in eternity, though in many ways it is. Pagkalaging a place to go when you die, ang pinag-usapan sa kingdom of God, we will miss many of the teachings of Jesus. Because apparently, there are several meanings to the kingdom of God. One is the place, the state of spirituality where we go after we die. But most of the time, Jesus was talking about another meaning of a kingdom of God. It could mean the reign of God or godly ideals in a person's life on earth. So the kingdom of God could mean pagahari ng Diyos o pagahari ng mga ideya ng mga isipin na makajos dito sa mundong ito sa buhay ng isang tao. So pag sinabing kingdom of God, maaring yun yung lugar na pupuntahan mo when you die at maaring ito yung uri ng mentalidad, uri ng pag-iisip na dapat ay mangyari sa iyo para mapagharian ka ng Diyos dito sa lupa. Dahil ang tunay na tahanan ng Diyos ay hindi mga bato o bakal na templo kundi ang ating isip. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit and the habitation of God is our mind, our thought. So that when that mind thinks along God's ways, when that mind thinks the way God wants it to think, God can reign and God can rule and God can guide and teach and the will of God can happen in that person's life. That is the kingdom of heaven. Na sinasabi sa Lord's Supper, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that kingdom meant in the Lord's Prayer is not the kingdom there beyond eternity, but it is the kingdom on earth. And it can happen when the thought of God is caught, understood, and lived by people who believe in Him. The kingdom of heaven could mean a consciousness, a mentality that enables God to rule one's life. It's a way of thinking, a way of life that brings about rest, peace, and happiness. Dahil ang kingdom of God ay ina, lagi natin inahalin tulad sa kapayapaan, katahimikan, pahinga. So, a way of thinking that makes you restful, peaceful, and happy. Ang tunay na pag-aharian ng Diyos yung makakapasok sa kingdom ito na pag-uusapan, kingdom, let's call it kingdom two, kung ang kingdom ay yung pupuntahan mo, yung kingdom one, pag namatay ka na in eternity, yung dito sa lupa, let's say kingdom two, nangyayari yun pagka ang isip ng tao ay 
lumilinya sumusunod sa kaisipan ni Jesus. Kaya ang sabi sa Romans 12.2, Be changed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12.2, Be changed by the renewing of your mind. Change unto Jesusness. Change unto readiness to follow Jesus, to understand Jesus, and to live by the standards of Jesus. It needs a change of mind. Ibig sabihin, kahit yung mga taong relihiyoso nung panahon ni Jesus, para sila pagharian ng Diyos, so the kingdom of God can come down unto them, they should change their mind about many things. About God, about God's teachings, about God's love revealed by Jesus. In a manner of speaking, Jesus was saying, Think your way into heaven. Think your way into peace. Think your way into rest. At totoo naman, yung kapayapaan, kapahingahan, katahimikan ng loob, lahat yan may kinalaman sa ating paraan ng pag-iisip. Kaya lagi sila sabi ni Jesus, Don't worry, do not be afraid, only trust. Dahil yun ang paraan para maranasan natin ang kapayapaan, ang paghahari ng Diyos sa ating buhay ngayon. So yung kingdom na ito, at ang pagpasok doon ay inihalin tulad sa kwento ng mga babaeng naghihintay ng ikakasal na lalaki para abaya nila pagpasok doon sa lugar. Matthew 25, 2-4 Five of the girls were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but no extra oil. The ones who were wise took along extra oil for their lamps. Para pasimplihin na Jesus ang kanyang pagtuturo, laging may mga dichotomy of twos. Two men, two towers, two foundations, two brothers, ngayon naman, two types of girls. Mga abay sa kasal. To represent two types of people and therefore two kinds of mentalities and two destinations. Those that can enter the kingdom and those that cannot. So, Group one was the wise group. They were ready, willing, and able to wait and participate in God's banquet. Kasi ang dami nilang dalang oil. May lamang oil yung lamp nila, may extra lalagyan pa sila ng extra oil. Kung sakaling gabihin na at hindi pa dumating yung groom, eh, mauubusan na sila ng oil. And then type two were the foolish ones. They were not ready, not willing and able to wait and participate. Because they had very little oil. Matthew 25, 5 to 6. The groom was late arriving. There was distance, there was absent that any foolish person could misuse. This is a common motif in the teachings of Jesus. God, the representative of God, justice, wisdom, happiness, most often comes late. Late according to the timetable of those people who are waiting. So, ang takal-takal na, hindi pa dumadating yung groom. Gabi yun, nag-aabang sila sa lansangan, may dalang kanya-kanya mga ilaw. And the girls became drowsy and fell asleep. So, inantok ang mga babaeng ito at nangakatulog sila. Then in the middle of the night, someone shouted, Here's the groom! Come to meet him! In the kingdom of God, the banquet, in the wedding, the happiness does not always come early as expected. Pero bigla-biglang dumarating, like a thief in the night. Yung ganong tema, paulit-ulit yan kay Jesus. At an hour and time you do not expect, biglang dumarating yung kingdom of God. Matthew 25, 7-13 to When the girls got up and started getting their lamps ready, the foolish one said to the others, Let us have some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. The girls who were wise answered, There's not enough oil for you, for all of us. Go and buy some for yourselves. So yung mga hangal na babae, nung magising, nagulat, aandap-andap na yung ilawan nila, nauubos na yung fuel, yung oil. At sabi nila doon sa mga may baon, Uy, hati naman tayo. Sabi ng mga matatalinong nagbaon, eh, kung nahatiin namin, pare-pareho lang tayong kukulangin. Hindi kasya para sa lahat. So, gumawa kayong paraan. Bumili na lang kayo. While the foolish girls were on their way to get some oil, the groom arrived. 
the girls who were ready went into the wedding and the doors were closed. Pagdaan ng groom ng kanyang prosesyon, sumunod na agad yung mga handa, yung mga marurunong na babae, at pagkapasok nila sa isang bulwagan o lugar ng kasalan, isinara na ang pinto. Meanwhile, the five other foolish ones were off trying to buy oil somewhere in the middle of the night. Later, the girls returned and shouted, Sir! Sir! Open the door for us! But the groom replied, I don't even know you. So, hindi sila nakasama sa loob. Yan ang sinasabi ng matatanda nung araw, kasama sa gayak, pwera sa lakad. Kasama sa planning, nung tumuloy na, ah, hindi na sila kasali. And the lesson is, sabi ni Jesus, So, my disciples, always be ready. You don't know the day or the time when all this will happen. Again, pag in-interpret nyo itong always be ready, as pagdating ng salvation, biglang may iba ang imahe ng Diyos. Mukhang kahit kasama ka sa abang ng abang noon, nag-effort ka naman, naiwang ka pa rin, pinagsarahan ka, parang lupit-lupit naman ng Diyos. Kaya hindi dapat itong basahin, itong kwento ito, as relating to salvation, as relating to heaven or eternal life. There's a principle in understanding here of parables, focus only on the main elements. Kingdom of God here should not always be equated with eternal salvation. If so, God would seem very unreasonable. Therefore, out of character, therefore, doubt the scholarship of your interpretation. The main lesson instead is that people should be ready, willing and able to welcome and receive the kingdom. And as we have said, the kingdom is a way of thinking. That the wedding is only a symbol. The place where you go for the wedding and the banquet is a symbol. It means a state of mind where upon entering, you experience Godness. You experience Jesusness. You experience happiness, joy, peace, and serenity. The lesson is people should be wise as to prepare their oil, to prepare enough oil, which could mean interest, dedication. It could mean faithfulness. It could mean energy, ability, and capacity to understand. In other words, kung gusto mo talaga na makasama doon sa kasalan, makasama sa kapayapaan, kasiyahan ng Diyos, dapat may sapat kang interest, dedication, faithfulness, energy, ability, capacity to understand. Because this kingdom of God is a way of thinking. It is a value system. It is a consciousness. Therefore, people should be patient. Because... To learn, to understand, to get into a mentality is not always quick. Tulad ng matagal ang pagdating ng groom. Pwedeng matagal, dahan-dahan ang pagdating ng kaliwanagan, ng karunungan, ng pagkaunawa. Pero all throughout and through that, dapat ka matyaga, nagahanap, and ready. God's pleasure is in a person's readiness to participate in His rule as symbolized by to participate in the wedding ceremony and in the banquet that follows. God's pleasure is in a person's wisdom as to really prepare oil to be able to wait even for long. Yung patuloy ka nag-aaral kahit hindi mo naiintindihan agad. Patuloy ka naghihintay kahit hindi ka nasisyahan agad. Patuloy ka na nagsisikap na maging handa para kung dumating yung groom, yung liwanag, yung kaliwanagan, ay maintindihan mo siya at makasama ka sa state of mentality that evolves into more and more godliness. To capture in your mind the concept of the kingdom of God. Not only to fi- enter a physical place after a physical death. Now, there's another illustration of the same lesson. Madalas natin pag-aralan, pero may paghambingin natin ang dalawang kwento, dali isa ang itinuturong leksyon. Matthew 25, 14 to 15. The kingdom is also like what happened when a man went away and put his three servants in charge of all he owned. The man knew what each servant could do. 
So he handed 5,000 coins to the first servant, 2,000 to the second, and 1,000 to the third. Then he left the country. Again, the same motif. The main person representing God goes afar. There is distance. There is absence that the foolish could misuse. Katulad din ang tagal-tagal dumating ng groom. May distance, may oras na lumilipas. Masusukat ngayon ang tiyaga mo. At kung paano mo, uubusin yung oras ng paghihintay. Three men this time, not ten girls. But the idea is the same. One got 5,000 coins, the other 2,000, and the third one 1,000. Distributed according to ability. What we receive from God is determined not by His capacity to give, but our capacity to receive. So ayon sa kanilang kakayahan, nahawakan yung pera na yon, yung ganong karami ang ibinigay sa kanila. Matthew 25, 16 to 18. As soon as the man had gone, the servant with 5,000 coins used them to earn 5,000 more. The servant who had 2,000 coins did the same with his money and earned 2,000 more. But the servant with 1,000 coins dug a hole and hid his master's money in the ground. Tatlong behavior. Pero ang totoo na, dalawa lang. Yung group one, yung binigyan ng 5,000 at nang binigyan ng 2,000, dinoble nila yung binigay sa kanila. Kung five naging ten, two naging four, and then, group 2 is nag-iisa. Yung 1,000, wala siyang dinagdag. Zero lang. Nothing more beyond what was given him. Think of what you do with God's gift. What do you do with God's trust? Lahat tayo binibigyan according to our capacity. Dapat na dodoble man lang natin yun. Yung isa, wala siyang ginawa. Matthew 25, 19 to 21. Sometime later, the master of the servants returned. The same idea as the groom came sometime later. There was a time lapse, then a reckoning presence, an accounting. Ano ang ginawa mo sa oil? Ano ang ginawa mo sa pambili ng oil? Ano ang ginawa mo sa ibinigay sa puhunan? It's the same idea. He called them in and asked what they had done with his money. In the case of the other girls, they were asked, What did you do with the money for buying oil? Why did you not buy a lot of oil to wait for me? Ano, inipit-ipit niya yung pera? Mabuti yung mga wise, ibinili nila lahat. So nung na-delay ang dating, may oil pa rin sila. The servant who had been given 5,000 coins brought them in, the, in with the 5,000 that he had earned. He said, Sir, you gave me 5,000 coins. I have earned 5,000 more. Wonderful, his master replied. You are a good and faithful servant. I left you in charge of only a little, but now I will put you in charge of much more. Come and share in my happiness. So ito rin yung papasok sa wedding banquet, makakasama sa happiness, sa kingdom of God. Same elements were in the story, like time. Sometime later, there was accounting. God's pleasure in a person's proportionate readiness, willingness, and ability to grow, to multiply, to use what is given him. This is the same as the girls who got the oil or the money to buy oil and these three men who were given money to invest. What were the rewards? Sharing in God's happiness. Being in the banquet. More coins to multiply which means more opportunity for happiness. Matthew 25, 22 to 23. Next, the servant who had been given 2,000 coins came in and said, Sir, you gave me 2,000 coins and I have earned 2,000 more. Wonderful, his master replied. You're a good and faithful servant. I left you in charge of only a little, but now I will put you in charge of much more. Come and share in my happiness. Yung 
tumubo ng 5 at yung tumubo ng 2, magkaiba ang tinubo, pero pareho sila ng ginawa. Dinoble ko ano yung unang ibinigay sa kanila, pareho ng reaction yung master at pareho sila ng premyo. Hindi sinukat ng master kung magkano ang natubo. Ang sinukat niya, magkano in relation to the puhunan given you. Ang tinubo. Hindi tayo pinagkukumpara ng Diyos. Dapat nagawa niya sampung kata, ikaw makagawa rin. Dapat nakagawa siya ng ito, ikaw din. Susubukin ka kung anong ginawa mo sa ibinigay sa iyo. Dapat proportionate sa ibinigay sa iyo ang iyong production. So there was the same formula, the rewards. Sharing in God's goodness and God's happiness. More coins to multiply. Opportunity for more happiness. Matthew 25, 24-25 The servant who had been given 1,000 coins then came in and said, Sir, I know that you are hard to get along with. You harvest what you didn't plant and gather crops where you haven't scattered seed. So may dagdag na element dito, may mga reklamo siya tungkol doon sa amo, which in a parable must not always be given so much value. Sa mga parable, may mga dekorasyon na details, pampakulay sa kwento, pero irrelevant doon sa tunay na theme, and this is one of those. Hindi naman relevant talaga kung ano yung personal behavior na akala nung taong ito tungkol sa kanyang amo. Ang mahalaga, anong ginawa mo sa binigay sa iyo? So let's not pay too much attention to the detail. I was frightened... Ito yung tunay na kwento. And went out and hid your money in the ground. Here is every single coin. Sabi niya, wala po akong natubo kasi natatakot ako na matalo, natatakot akong malugi, natatakot ako masisinin nyo, natatakot ako mag-risk, natatakot ako may gawin. So, ibinaw ko na lang sa lupa para sigurado na wala kayong maireklamo kasi kung anong binigay nyo sa akin, eto, buong buo kong binabalik sa inyo. The foolish girls who did not use the money to buy more oil, to make good use of money, is the same as this man who did not use the money for something that could produce more happiness, more participation in God's kingdom. Matthew 25, 26-27 The master of the servant told him, You are lazy and good for nothing. You know that I harvest where I don't plant and gather crops where I haven't scattered seeds? Well, these were excuses of the man so that he would not be too compelled to perform. Sinisi niya agad yung amo niya, imbes siya. Verse 27, You could have at least put my money in the bank so that I could have earned interest on it. Sabi, gusto mo pala magsigurado? Natatakot ka sa akin, natatakot ka sa lahat ng bagay. Sana nilagay mo mo lang sa banko para nagka-interest. Cost of money man lang. Madagdag. Here you see that Jesus was telling a story about non-Jews, about Gentiles. Or He was bringing the Jews out of their Jewish context kasi sa mga Jews, hindi sila nag interest sa mga banko, sa mga pautang, sa kapwa nila Jew, pero sobra sila mag interest sa ibang lahi. So, Obviously, Gentiles or Jews here are being led out of the Jewish tradition by Jesus by introducing the idea of interest. It means that Jesus is not offended at all by interest kung ito ay tama, ito ay legal, ito ay makatao. Kasi syempre, may cost of money. Just lang yun. Umutang ka sa akin ng 2,000 10 years ago, ibabalik mo sa akin 2,000 din ngayon, sana man lang 2,300 kasi yung cost of money. Diba? Kung inilagay ko yun sa banko, kumita na interest, eh, inilagay ko na nga sa'yo, hindi na nagka-interest, ninerbius pa ako araw-araw kung magbabayad ka, tapos wala ka malagi dadagdag dyan. Dapat may ganong klase tayong ideya. We reward those who help us. So yung nagpautang sa'yo, nagpahiram, i-reward mo with dagdag. Pag nagbayad ka na, o dagdagan mo ng kahit isang kaing na prutas, o ano man. Pero hindi dapat na ganun-ganun mo lang ibabalik. Nagalit sa kanya, yung amo, representing God. The third servant had a bad impression of God. He had a bad image of God, probably created by tradition. You know, maraming religious tradition, bad ang image of God na binubuo nila. God na malupit, God na magagalitin, God na mapaghiganti. Ganun ang binubuo nila. Kaya, uy, matakot ko sa Diyos, matakot ko sa Diyos, puro takot ng takot. Kasi pinapadali nila yung pangdisiplina sa mga tao, tinatakot nila sa Diyos. 
Mali ang pagpresent nila sa Diyos. Kaya dumating si Jesus para itama yung wrong image of God that was in the head of Israelites. Kailang ipipresent niya ang true image of God sa kanyang buhay, sa kanyang mga pangaral, sa kanyang halimbawa. So the third servant is afraid of God and is afraid to commit a mistake. Binigyan ka ng talent kumanta, takot-takot kang kumanta, baka ka pumayak, baka ka mawala sa tono, baka ka mawala ang iyong control of yourself. So, puro takot, puro takot. Hindi lalago ang ibinigay sa iyo pag puro takot. His mistaken notion about God, his needless fear of God, makes him play it safe. Makes him conservative, unfruitful, and a complainer. Yan yung mga karakter ng hindi nakakakilala sa tunay na likas ng Diyos. And this man could have been lazy in knowing and seeking God. He could have been harboring wrong notions about God. Remember? Bakit siya hindi nagkaroon ng accomplishment? Mali ang pagkakakilala niya sa kanyang amo sa Diyos. Takot ang nagari sa kanyang buhay. At sa atin man, hindi tayo paghaharian ng Diyos hindi tayo makakasunod sa kanyang gusto kung puro takot ang hihiral sa ating buhay. Kung puro playing it safe. Kung puro pag-iwas na magkamali. Dahil ang akala natin napakasungit at napakahigpit ng Diyos. Matthew 25, 28-30 Then the Master said, Hindi mo pinatubo ang pera ko Now your money will be taken away and given to the servant with 10,000 coins. Everyone who has something will be given more. And then they will have more than enough. But everything will be taken from those who don't have anything. You are a worthless servant. And you will be thrown out into the dark where people will cry and grit their teeth in pain. So yan yung ang yumaman na yumaman pa lalo, yung wala na nga, nawalan pa. But in a way explained by Jesus. Yung mayaman, yumaman kasi nagsipag, nag-invest. So kaya yamanin pa niya lalo. Pero yung binigyan na niya, wala namang ginawa, maghihirap yon babawi ang panangkonting nasa kanya na. It's a Jesus principle. You give to the deserving, you don't always give to the needy. Kung yung needy ay tamad, yung needy ay non-performing, yung needy ay ang pinapairal ay puro takot sa kanyang buhay, hindi siya nagsisikap, yung ibinibigay sa kanya, hindi niya pinaparami, babawian pa siya. The godly way is to reward the deserving, to give to the deserving, not always give to the needy if their neediness, if their poverty is because of their laziness. But again, sabi niya, nasa loob ka na, papalabasin ka pa, pagsasarhan ka ng pinto, at doon ka may iwan sa dilim, kung saan magnangalit ang iyong mga bagang dahil sa iyong pagdurusa. Again, this is not to be referring to eternal punishment or hell because that would make God seem very punitive and unloving. Instead, in keeping with the hermeneutical frame and the principle of interpretation being applied, dapat natin isipin, hindi eternal life ang pinag-uusapan dito. Yung out there is not hell in eternity. It is living your life here on earth like hell. At yung in here, in the banqueting hall, inside, is not heaven in eternity. It is a life that is heavenly because your mentality makes you prosperous. Your mentality makes you enjoy God's goodness. Your mentality makes you enjoy peace and rest. Not eternal salvation. The lessons are that the lazy will be really will will not really know God. You mga tamad mag-aral, tamad makinig, tamad magsaliksik, tamad magisip-isip. You will never know God. Ang makikilala niyo lang sa Dios ay yung ipinapakilala sa inyo ng sino mang nagpapakilala. Dapat may mga kanya-kanya pang sasaliksik, pag-aaral, pagbubuni muni, pag-iisip-isip. Huwag maging tamad. The lazy will not really know God's will in their lives. Because they will never take risks. They will never begin any project. They will not do anything. They will bury the talent under the soil and play it safe. And playing it safe that way 
could be very dangerous. Because whatever God gives you, God would like you to multiply it. Yung mga binigyan na, binawian pa, huwag magtatampo. Kasi kung binigyan na kayo, binigyan kayo ng tiwala, binigyan kayo ng talent, binigyan kayo ng trust, binigyan kayo ng posisyon, bakit kayo tatanggalin, tatanggalan, kung kayo yung matino, mahusay, productive, mabunga, sino namang master ang magtatanggal sa inyo nun kung mabunga kayo? Kaya kung natatanggalan, isipin mo lang, saan ako nagkamali? Anong pagkukulang ko? At ayusin mong yung buhay para makabigyan ka ng second chance, mabalik sa iyo. Yung tiwala, yung posisyon, yung ano man yun na ibinigay na binawi kasi hindi mo pinahalagahan. Imbes magtampo, imbes magalit, sisihin nyo nga mo tulad dito sa kwentong ito, dapat ang mga sarili lang natin natin suriin kung bakit nangyayari sa buhay natin ang mga nangyayari. We are not just passive victims of what happens in life. We are participants in what happened and in everything that happens. Kaya dapat maintindihan natin yung pananagutan. Those who are deficient in the knowledge of God because of laziness to learn and because of negligence will become more deficient, more deprived. Mahirap na nga, masihirap pa. Konti na nga ang alam, mas pupurol pa ang isip kasi binabawian ng talino kasi hindi ginagamit yung talino sa tama. Another lesson is that those who don't know God in a positive way, those who fear God needlessly, will not be able to have and enjoy spiritual fruits. They will not enjoy God's happiness. Kaya maraming tao, religious, pero hindi spiritually happy. Faithful sa religion, pero walang peace and rest. Dahil hindi pa umaandar sa utak nila ang utak ni Jesus. Hindi pa sila nag-iisip sa paraan ng pag-iisip ni Jesus. Nag-iisip pa sila sa lumang paraan. Kaya sinasabi ni Jesus, I'm going to give you a new wine, you must put it in a new container. I'll give you a new idea, you've got to have a new brain to accept and operationalize it. Bibigyan ko na kayong bagong katuruan, bagong kautosan, na ang magiging bunga ay kapayapaan, katahimikan, pero kailangan magkaroon kayo ng pagbabago sa inyong paraan ng pamumuhay at pag-iisip. Kasi kung hindi, hindi rin kayo makakarating sa langit. Hindi rin tatahimik ang inyong buhay. Hindi rin kayo magiging masagana. Those who fear God needlessly would only become spiritually poorer. Yung takot na takot mag-aral ng ibang ideya, takot na takot sa mga katuroang bago sa kanilang paninig, paninig, takot na takot suriin ang mga dati nila mga paniniwala, you'll get stuck there and you will not grow unto Jesusness. This is why Jesus was sent by God to reveal the true image of God. If Jesus was sent to reveal the true image of God, it means that the image of God known by the Israelites of His time was wrong or was not completely right or was partially wrong. Kaya kailangan ipadala si Jesus para itama. Kaya ang ating pag-isip tungkol sa Diyos, tungkol sa langit, tungkol sa kaligtasan, lahat ng yan dapat i-review in light of the teachings of Jesus. Colossians 1.15 The Son is the image of the invisible God. God the Father in heaven is invisible. He made Himself visible through Jesus. In Him, the fullness of the deity lived in bodily form. Kaya napakahalagang kilalanin si Jesus. Mga teachings ni Jesus ang unahin ipaibabaw, paghariin sa lahat ng halo-halo at iba-iba mga teachings. John 1.14 From Him, meaning Jesus, all the kindness and all the truth of God have come down to us. At yung ikinwento ni Jesus na yon, yung mga lalaking binigyan ng puhunan, yung mga babaeng binigyan ng pambili ng oil, isa lang ang sinasabi. Kailangan, handa ka na yung ibinigay sa iyo ay gamitin. Kailangan matapat ka. Kailangan patient ka. Para kung dumating yung karunungan, handa ka maintindihan ito. Dumating yung liwanag, hindi ka masilaw at umiwas, kundi iwal ka mo ang liwanag. Pag dumating ang katuroan, ready ang utak mo. Kaya dapat yung utak natin laging pinapractice, pinubuksan. Ready, willing, and able to discern right from wrong. 
to discern rubbish from treasure and to discern the true teachings of Jesus from many other religious ideas crowding our minds. Who can enter the kingdom of God? Who can experience heaven on earth? And of course, heaven later on after you die. But now heaven on earth, which means peace, rest, love. Who can enjoy the master's happiness? Those who will wait upon the groom, Jesus. Those who will be wise to prepare and have enough oil. Those who will invest resources in the kingdom. Those who will multiply God's gifts. Anong gift ang ibinigay sa inyo ni Lord? Dapat yan linangin, bungkalin, pagyamanin, pamulaklakin, pamungahin, at lalo kayong pagpapalain ng Panginoon. At isa sa mga puhunan natin sa pinag-uusapan na kwento na ito ay karunungan na ibinigay ng Diyos. Dapat dagdagan, palakasin, palalimin, palawakin, pataasin ang aabot ng ating isip. Aral ng aral dapat. Nananalangin, nakikinig sa mga may saysay, nakikipagturuan, nakikipagfellowship sa mga naghahanap din sa Diyos. Hanap ng hanap, refine ng refine, para yung mga ideas natin about God will continue to grow. Hindi pwede na yung nalaman mo nung grade school tungkol sa Diyos, yung pati ng alam mo tungkol ngayon, walang asenso, walang naiba. Sabi nga ni Paul, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. Now that I'm a man, I give up childish ways. At hindi tunay na kabataan ang edad ang pinag-uusapan doon, kundi spiritual growth. Once upon a time, you were a spiritual baby, but now you should not be a baby anymore. You should grow. Grow in the knowledge of Jesus, grow in the understanding of the Jesus teaching, beyond yung nakikita natin sa mga Christmas card, beyond yung mga nakikita natin sa mga poster na oversimplified, black and white truths daw. Aral lang aral. At pag nakakakita tayo ng mga ideya na alam natin, sa panalangin natin, at sa ating pangangatwiran ay nakikita natin superior sa dati nating alam, say goodbye sa dating alam and embrace the new revelation, the new level of learning. Because we are to grow from glory to glory. And for you to grow into something, you have to outgrow something else. You have to grow out of something to grow into the next thing. Huwag tayong masyadong sentimental about old beliefs, old ideas. Dapat nakikita natin, oo nga, oo nga, kaaaral. Kasi, the more we are ready to receive God's revelation and teaching, the more God will give us. Mas nagkakaroon ng tubo yung ibinibigay niya sa atin na karunungan, mas bibigyan pa tayo niya karunungan. And remember, the kingdom of God is not beyond the clouds. The kingdom of God is not here nor there. It is in our minds. Your mind is the kingdom of God. Pero kung ang naghahari dyan ay takot, worry, ay si satanas ang nakatira dyan, hindi ang Diyos. Kung ang naghahari dyan ay mga inggit, yabang, mga kasakiman, pagmamalaki, pagmamalupit, hindi ang kaharian ng Diyos. Yan ay kaharian ni satanas. It's in the mind. Kung isa kasi sa sobra natin pag-iisip ng kaharian ng Diyos ay nandun sa malayong malayo, hindi na natin naiisip na sino nagahari ngayon sa kaharian ng Diyos na dapat ay nasa akin ang aking isip. Paano ako mag-isip? Anong bunga ng mga iniisip ko? Kapayapaan ba o takot? Pag-ibig ba o muhi? Pagiging mabait ba o maging malupit sa kapwa? Mapagbigay o maging sakim? Anong nangyayari sa akin? You are what you do every day. You are your totality is a product of the way you think. That's why be changed by the renewing of your mind. Let the mind be the kingdom of God. Dun siya nasusunod, dun siya nagahari, dun siya nagpapaliwanag. So who will enter the banquet hall? Who will enter the master's presence and happiness? Those who invest in enough oil. Those who prepare well. Those who know the master correctly and enough. Those who are ruled by ignorance and fear will not enter the kingdom of God. Yung ignorant ka sa Bible, konting knowledge, ang naging bunga pa, natakot ka, naging malupit ka pa, you will never enter the kingdom. And we don't mean you will not be saved. It means you will not enjoy 
the fruits of salvation. Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Those who do the will of God who lives in your mind, those are the ones who will experience heaven on earth. Ephesians 3, 16-19 God is wonderful and glorious. I pray that the spirit, His Spirit will make you become strong followers and that Christ will live in your hearts because of your faith. You see, not living in the clouds, not living there, not living in Mount Olympus, in your hearts. Which of course is a figure of speech for the mind, for the brain. Stand firm and be deeply rooted in His love not in fear. I pray that you and all God's people will understand what is called, called wide or long or high or deep. I want you to know all about Christ's love, although it is too wonderful to be measured. Then your lives will be filled with all that God is. Mapupuno ka ng Diyos, pagaharian ka ng Diyos, pagpinagahari mo sa iyong isip, si Jesus. This is heaven on earth. Most of the time, this is the kingdom of God meant by Jesus. Although at some other time, it also means that kingdom beyond earthly life. But most of the time, Jesus was concerned about the real, day-to-day, -day, practical life of people. How is Jesus ruling our minds? Is God in residence in our brains? It takes a continuous review, study, submission to new learnings so that more and more God will rule our lives. Lord, teach us to operationalize all this in our daily life. Paano namin gagawin practically ito sa aming pamumuhay? Paano namin i-apply? Paano isusuko sa inyo everyday ang aming isip para kayo ang maghari na yung isipin nyo ang iniisip namin? Na ang gusto nyo isipin namin ang iniisip nga namin para ito yung magbunga ng kapayapaan, kasaganaan, katahimikan sa buhay. Teach us to surrender to you our thoughts. Give us the spirit of discernment to know your thoughts so we can replace worldly and ungodly thoughts with your thoughts. Pagbulay-bulayan natin ito, mga kapatid. Paano ito gagawin sa buhay? Paano madidisiplina ang sarili to think in the way Jesus wants us to think? How can we know Jesus more, study more, learn more? Be with the Lord in silent prayer and ask Him, to continue to make you obedient to the will of the Father so that the Father will indeed be king in the throne of our hearts. Father, finish this message. Make it personal for each one of us so we can yield our thoughts and we can be like the wise men who invested, like the wise girls who had enough oil so that we can enter into your presence, into peace, into happiness and abundance. Talk to your people, O oh God.